Okay, uh, I am here with, uh, this is Kai that you probably are gonna see in the shot here in a second. And then we have the whining dog that you can hear is Bella. And Bella's the dog that we're primarily here to work with. Bella um, was struck um, by a male and uh, abused by a male. And so now Bella does not like males. Now, Bella is a big pit. And so she could, uh, she's not gonna get a mess with by anybody now and she's making sure. But you can hear she's whimpering because she's so reactive, I can't work with her at this point. So she's downstairs so we can kind of talk. In this video, we're gonna go over some tips and tricks that you can use if you have a dog that is fearful or reactive or aggressive towards specific people, like uh, men. Um, so basically, the first thing we wanna do is, um, I'm going to kind of demonstrate a couple of things, but one of the things the guardian mentioned was when she comes home, Bella jumps up on one of the guardians. The other, her primary guardian, she doesn't now, but she used to. Well, when a dog jumps up on someone, that's a way of claiming and saying, you belong to me. So if the dog, we come in and the dog claims this, well, then it's kind of a leadership attribute. So what we want to do is we want to tell the dog uh, or, or uh, create a scenario where the dog can't get to us. So um, I have a bunch of videos on my website about stopping dogs from jumping. You can go to Dog Dog Problems and, and just, uh, te just search for jumping and you'll see videos for that. I'm not going to describe that one here. But I have a bunch of uh, treats here. There's some stairs and there's two sets of baby gates, which actually makes this ideal. So basically when, uh, when the guardian comes home, do you come through the, you don't come through the basement, I'm assuming, right? Come through the basement. Come through the door over here. Okay, so I'm going to pantomime a little bit and just kind of follow me at the camera. You can probably stay there. So when I come through the door, she's gonna hear me down there. She's gonna be whimpering and whining all excited. She's probably like she has been, right? Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here. She's not even there now. <laughs> and I would say sit so she can see you. And if she doesn't sit within three seconds, then I'm gonna walk over here. So now I'm outside of her line of sight. There she came back. And so I'm gonna come back over here, sit. One, two, three, didn't sit. I walk away. And I'm going to sit down. Now, she's probably going to go overload. And freak, what the hell are you doing? Why are you not letting me out? I'm freaking out. So we just wait. And as, after one minute, I come back over here. Sit. Sit. So she's obeying. I'll give her. She didn't sit, so I walk away. This time for two minutes. Next time for four minutes. So the only way that I'm going to start the process of going down there is she's got to listen to me and obey me first. Now the distance helps her be not quite so intense, but she's been down there for a while, so she's gonna be have all that energy. And if you're waiting and, and she's doing this, I would just wait until she stops whimpering. <laughs> sit, Bella, sit. Three seconds, walk away. So I actually said it twice there. Now she's not gonna do it for me because she doesn't want me in the house, but for you guys, it's probably a higher likelihood. Now if she does sit, and this is basically what I was just going to try, talk about off camera. So we have a baby gate right here. So as soon as, let's say that she does sit, then I'm going to reach for this. And it's going to make a, jig, a little bit of sound. And if she gets up at any point, I stop what I'm doing and I walk away. And I sit down. Do the, Try to set this up the first couple of times. We, she, we don't want her to have an accident. So what I would do is make sure that she gets to go out and do her business. You come home, or then you go out and run a quick errand. You run 15 minutes. Come back, and then you're going to do this. So she doesn't have a full bladder. We don't have to worry about that. We don't feel any urgency. I know you're going to get a lot of treats. All right, so I come back over. Sit. Sit. And if she doesn't, and let's say she does. So you're gonna, first stage is just walking back, walking away until when you come over here and say sit, boom, she sits down. The next step is I come over here. I'm not even going to open it. I'm just going to reach for it. And this is probably going to get her to come up out of a sit. What she does, you pull your hand back and tell her to sit. Now, if she does within three seconds sit, then I would continue the process. If she doesn't, then I would walk all the way out of her line of sight and wait until she calms down and you don't hear that Star Wars sounds, and then try it again. And eventually, you'll be able to come over here, you'll be able to touch it. And then when you get to it, you make jiggly sounds. And eventually, you're going to open it a little bit and close it. And, and the idea is, at any point you get that, you immediately abort and walk away. So this is a form of operant conditioning. What we're saying is when you're calm, the process of releasing you continues. As soon as you get excited, that's what stops the process. She's not going to realize this at first because this probably works. When I whip her like this, they come faster. So you're going to have to pay a bit of a penance for what you did before. So basically, eventually, you're going to be able to come over here, tell her to sit. She sits. You open the door. You start walking down the steps. Now, if she gets up at any point, you turn around and walk back up, close the door. Well, actually, let me stop that. 
when once she sat and started the process, anytime she gets up, you're going to give her one opportunity to rectify. You tell her to sit. So as soon as you're walking, you're doing the third step, and she gets up, you stop and say, sit. If she sits, then you continue. If she doesn't sit within three seconds, then you turn around and walk away, and the whole process starts over. This might, the story I just got done tell, telling was a guy in Los Angeles took an hour and 45 minutes before his dog was leashed up. Second time, it was like 15 minutes or 20 minutes. This will get faster and faster, but the first time is going to be the hardest and the longest. Maybe the first couple times. But eventually, she's going to realize, as soon as they start whimpering, they stop. Your timing has to be precise. The very first whimper, you have to immediately stop, freeze in place, and say, sit. If, or if she whimpers, I guess, while she's seated, then you can just stop and wait for her to stop whimpering and then continue. And if she whimpers longer than three seconds, then you walk up. So back and forth, you're going to go and eventually get down to that second set of, uh, of stairs and uh, baby gate and tell her to sit. Or And then if she's already sitting, great, then you can start the process. But as soon as you reach for it or to reach, step over it, as soon as she gets up, you stop, tell her to sit. She has three seconds. So this is going to be a process that will probably take you an hour, hour and a half, so we're not going to film the whole thing. It'll be great footage. But eventually, through enough repetition, she's going to learn, the only way I'm going to get released is by being calm and balanced. Now, the, the whole point of this is because when she comes home, the guardian, she jumps up on the guardian. Well, that's a way of claiming. So what we do is if the dog jumps up now, when she's really excited like this, it's going to be hard for her to control herself. But if you can achieve this and have her calm all the way through, she's going to be a lot less excited. So then when she jumps up on you, she's not spazzing out. So when she jumps up, just cross your arms, look up at the ceiling and become very, and hold still and become boring. If you turn away, then that's, oh, I made her turn. I'll jump, go around and jump on this side and then this side and this side. So we just become boring. Oh man, you're boring. I'm going to look for something else to do. As soon as she jumps down, reach down and pet her and say the word off. So you create a command word. Getting down is actually rewarding. So this would be uh, what I would recommend. This is part one. This is going to be a bunch of little vignettes in this video. So part one is to help her learn that she's going to be calm. And look and look for other ways, other things that she gets excited for, for her food or whatever it is. I'm not going to start the feeding process until you're calm. So look for ways to delay gratification that way. All right, so now the next thing we need to do, and I probably should have said this first, but the, other, the last part was on my mind. Uh, if you want to have your male friends that are going to help you out watch from this part of the video on. So what you're going to do is you want to have a male friend that comes over, and if you're the male friend watching this, you need to listen to the women. Um, well, in general, that's probably a good life lesson. But in this space specifically, because this dog is reactive to men and is comfortable with women and lives with these women, so you need to, you're need you here to help. So what we're going to do is we're going to come in, we're going to sit down, or maybe have them come around through the back so they don't even see the dog, or the dog doesn't even see the person. And what you're going to have the person do now, does she know how to catch? All right, to teach a dog to catch, a lot of us, we go like this, one, two, and then we throw in the third one, and the dog's looking for it, and it hits their head. So the way that you teach a dog to catch, catch, catch. So she knows how to do it. I didn't know until we just did this. But if the dog doesn't do it, you have somebody sitting next to the dog, and I throw the treat just on the first one. So you try to make it such a good throw, all I have to do is open my mouth and it goes in. And if it doesn't, it boink, then you pick, the person there picks it up and gives it back to the thrower. Otherwise, the dog has no motivation to grab it out of the air because I just get off the ground. But if I can't get off the ground, then I start trying to get it. <laughs> Teaching your dog to fetch is a wonderful thing, especially in this sort of scenario. So we can have a barrier between and the male can interact with the dog while you guys feel safe and the dog can't get to him. So the male feels safe and the dog realizes I can't get to him. And they get it engaged, and the male now is associated with all these tasty treats. Make sure a really high value treat, I'm using chicken liver, which is my number one. So as soon as the dog, your, your male comes over and have them just shut up, don't say anything, sit down and be quiet. She'll probably smell you. She'll probably whimper a little bit, but as long as you're quiet, she won't realize. And you wanna come over here? And of course, she, as soon as I come over, she walks away. So when you come over here, she won't be, she'll be right there. So I want you to have like a handful of these high value training treats, and I, mean, I got three of them here. Well, actually, now I got two. No, I've got three. And so when she's there, Bella. Oh, do a better throw than I did. Two of them hit the wall there and came on this side of the fence. So we'll do a, a couple more. There we go. And then you walk away. So this is a form of uh, kind of something that I used to do uh, with dogs that are aggressive is want them to see something, but at enough of a distance where they're not reactive. And then we want to practice and rep it. So basically what we do is you have like three treats. You come over here. As soon as she looks at you, you throw the th three treats out, and then you walk away. So she sees you, you appear, and then it rains treats. And then once I get the treats, I look up, 
he's gone. And you're not saying anything. We're not saying good girl. We're not saying sit or any of those things. So what I'd like the guests to do, and this would be nice if you could actually have, if you have a couple male neighbors that can help, because this is something that would be really easy to do very quickly. So they come over here and just give them a, a plethora of treats, one of my favorite words, plethora. And then to three at a time, they can come over here when she's quiet, throw in the three treats and walk away. And now what you could do is, if, if you wanted to even do it even further, is have somebody downstairs, one of the uh, women that lives here, and every time the dog licks up the treat, say the word friendly, or something along those lines, something that means uh, to be nice. Um, and then the idea is the person comes over here and really for maybe 10 trips over here and throwing 10 treat, uh, three treats each time. So the dog's gonna get like 30 treats. Then they come over here and you turn the TV up really loud, and they go and exit through the door, or you put the little blanket thing, army crawl through. So, uh, but then the person leaves. And then wait for her to settle down before you do let her back up. And again, we would have her go and sit, sit. So this way the dog starts to see a male and then it trains treats and the male doesn't try to talk to me, pet me, or and look at me. And when we're doing this, try to avoid direct eye contact with the dog, that's a challenge. Also, this is front facing, is confrontational. Whenever you're dealing with a dog that you might not like, you try to be sideways. So when the guest comes over here to throw the treats, it'd be nice if they can kind of come over and kind of go like sideways. And after a while, she'll start associating a male appearing, like I said, means treats. Now, the next step would be basically, and you have to make sure that you feel comfortable with these gates. This gate is more, more durable or dependable than that one is. Um, so, and you might even put the dog on a leash uh, when you get to this point. But the whole point of this stage is to make sure the dog is, feels comfortable. So I'd like you to have at least five, but preferably 10 different men that come over to the house a couple times and do this 10 treat tossing deals. So that's why neighbors will be easy. It should be a short five, 10 minute visit. Uh, the next stage would be, as long as this is good and secure, is have her on the leash down there and let her come all the way up here. And this is after we've taught her to catch. Make sure the lights are on so that she can see it well. And then sit. So if she's not sitting, now these are stairs, so it'll be harder, but sometimes you can use stairs, and sometimes dogs will still sit on the stairs. And then basically, they're just gonna toss her 10 treats, and don't do it that fast. Toss one, and kind of turn around, toss the second one. And you can come up with a word, you can say friendly when you're getting the catch, but you don't necessarily need to sign the word there. So now the dog's gonna be right here. So she's a lot closer. Right now we have two sets of, we have a set of, a uh, whole set of stairs and two baby gates. So she's way down there, so the intensity is a lot less because she's further and further away. So the idea is eventually, uh, first she gets just the sight of a man, means treats. Then the, then the man comes up close to her and she's getting treats. Um, uh, and I would have her on this side. I was thinking about maybe doing the guest down there, but she could probably easier jump this way on steps. It'd be harder for her to jump out. And if you're worried about it, like I said, use the leash. But if you're worried about it, we probably should still be tossing at the other angle. So this would be the first stage. The same guest comes over here and is throwing the treats. Does that like, you know, anywhere from four to 10 visits. Eventually we come over and she comes over there. You should see her tail. And we like her tail kind of parallel with the spine. And not whimpering and whining, but actually like, I like this guy. Um, so then the last stage that we can actually do is you'd have to find, I don't know if we have anything strong enough because she's a strong dog, but you find a way that you can basically, uh, and you can maybe do it outside when the weather's not so crappy. Take a leash, the end of the leash has the loop that you put your hand through. So what you do is you run it around the leg of like, a, or around a tree or a fence post, and then run through the end of the leash through that handle, then attach it to her, to her collar. Now make sure she's wearing a harness or a martingale so you know she cannot get out of it. And well, actually, now that I'm looking at your fence, you could probably do it from your fence on the outside, but the problem is your fence is like a six foot privacy fence. Don't wanna reach through because they'll probably get bit. So the idea is to have the dog tethered, and then, you, and then the guest can be at whatever distance, maybe 10 feet or whatever, and the guest tells her to sit. She has to sit before you're doing this. When a dog sits, it's a way of indication that I'm kind of comfortable, I'm relaxed. So the dog sits and then basically just play catch. And at, at first, and, and you know, the guest knows the dog can't get any closer than that. So I feel comfortable. Normally I wouldn't throw treats to a dog that's whimpering like that and I'm out of treats anyway, so let me grab some more. Mm -hmm. um, but um, actually we'll throw a couple bully bites. That should give us silence for a minute. 
<laughs> so, all right. So the next stage is we want to be able to be able to get closer and closer to her. That's why if we do it outside, and outside would be ideal because you have the sight, sounds, and smells of birds and kids playing and all the rest of this stuff. Just not when it's crappy, as crappy outside as it is now. Yes, I did not. I did didn't uh, recognize you, didn't I? I'll hook you up too. So the idea is we want a guest to be able to get closer and closer and closer to the dog, but with a safeguard in place, the leash, so that we know the dog can't actually do any damage. And the whole point is, uh, it, as the guest is, is approaching the dog, he has to stop and tell the dog to sit. Now, in my two tests, will the dog not sit or not take a treat? If either one of those is the case, you're probably so close, the dog is almost at its breaking point. And if she's reacting like this, you are way too close. The whole idea is we want her practice being around guests while she's calm. So basically, maybe we're at 15 feet, and that's as far as she can get with the leash. We just toss the treats and have somebody else that she trusts nearby to grab the treats if she doesn't grab them. And but she, again, she should be able to catch by the time you get to this point. And then, and then, and the next time, maybe we're at about 12 feet now. So the next time I come over, and I do it for 11 feet. And if she won't sit, or if I throw the treats and she's not interested, she's saying I'm too close. So we would back up a half step and practice. Don't take a step forward until she's, she'll sit there and you can toss her at least five treats in a row with her sitting the whole time. This might take several visits, but eventually you're going to get to the point where you're like this close. And again, we're not trying to pet her and tell your guest, uh, the males, not to make direct eye contact or see her throw the treat, but don't tell, you know, we're telling her to sit, but we're not disagreeing. She's growling. We never disagree with the dog for growling. That's the antithesis of aggression. It's saying I'm uncomfortable. So if we do these things, we help her practice calming herself down. We're using kind of, uh, I don't say structure, but an environment that helps prevent her from getting to the guest. So she feels more and more relaxed and we just rep it and we create a lot of positive association. Now, the last thing we'd like to do is actually get her to walk next to a guest while we're on a walk. Dogs process things by literally moving forward. Problem is she's what, close to hundred pounds? She's like 85. She's like 85 pounds and she's all muscle. And so she, and she doesn't know how to walk with a loose leash. So we might actually have to, uh, you know, uh, find a, a female trainer that can, I have a female that's working with aggressive dogs uh, named Anna. She's a race car, dra uh, a drag racer, literally, uh, during the summer. But basically, maybe we have Anna come by and working with teaching the dog to walk with a loose leash. You need to achieve that skill first before we actually go on a walk. Then what we'd like to do is parallel walk. So maybe I have, I'm here, one of you two, and we have the dog right here. And then we have the male, might be having to have to be across the street. And we just walk around the block. Everybody is aligned, nobody's in front. Whoever's in front is perceived a leader. So we want the dog to experience being with the human, with the human not trying to pet them. And this is after the human's already come over here and appeared and thrown the treats. And now, uh, and, uh, and then thrown the treats for the, uh, for the uh, catch on the leash till you get to the point where you're about this close, a couple feet away. At that point, you probably could have them walking a couple feet away. But make sure they're far enough away that the dog can't, if the dog lunges, you have, and you have good control. So a martingale or a good collar. And before you do this, before you do any of these things, exercise her first. Don't give her the 30 or the maximum number on the stairs, but get them out and then give her about 10 to 15 minutes relax before you have the guests come over and practice. That will take out of a lot of her thunder and give her ability to be more pro uh, processing. So the last stage is, again, you just walk around the block. And so you're, she's walking together with you. They're not trying to pet, but she's essentially practicing being around the person with good things happening, you know, tossing treats. Then I'm telling her to sit and I toss treats and now the dog's starting to follow commands. And then now we're actually doing it when we're on a walk and dogs process things by moving forward. So by doing all these things, the dog should, by the time you're actually on the walk, the dog probably should have been exposed to that person anywhere from like seven to 15 times in a positive way and you don't see any reactivity. Don't start taking the walk if the dog is reactive and whining when the person's around, unless it's just whining and whimpering for treats. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I mean, there's a whole lot of other things we can do, but those are, this is basically uh, a roadmap of uh, several steps that you guys can do to help her start practicing having a positive association around other people that don't strike her and nothing bad happens. So these are tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that's reactive and how you can help them practice being calm around whatever they're reactive to.